Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today we're talking about a hair care company that ironically enough has actually damaged hair and even made people's fallout. And no, we're not talking about Monate again, but we're actually talking about a company called Diva Curl. Now I know many of you have asked me to talk about this topic and it's just taken me a while to get to it. So I'm so sorry, but I finally have dug into Diva Curl and today I am presenting to you my findings on this company. What irritates me the most about companies like this is that not only does their product do the opposite of what it claims, but Diva Curl doesn't seem to care. I haven't seen them pull their products and issue apologies, but they call their products safe and just move on. And we'll get there in a bit for now, but let's just get into who the company is and then how they did curly haired women so heckin' dirty. Let's get into it. Diva Curl started in New York City in 1994 as the salon specializing in curly hair. The salon had incredible success and launched the product line Diva Curl. On their website, Diva Curl says that in 2002, they took the poo out of shampoo, which is kind of gross and it kind of leaves you with the word sham, but okay, sis, we'll get into that in a minute. According to Diva Curl, they pioneered an innovative new hair care category with the launch of No Poo Original, our game-changing alternative to traditional shampoo. This first of its kind, no suds conditioning cleanser is free of sulfates, parabens, and silicones to gently cleanse curls without stripping the natural oils they need to look healthy, bouncy, and simply gorgeous. No poo changed the industry and the lives of countless curl friends. So this poo is paraben, sulfates, and silicones. Sulfates and silicones specifically are in a lot of hair care products, and there's been quite a bit of debate about them. Generally, any big brand you see like Pantene, Dove, Garnier, they'll have sulfate right there at the top of the ingredient list. And usually there's silicone or sometimes dimethicone or in the conditioner. Sulfates and silicones aren't the devil or anything. It's not like the products with them are truly harmful, but for curly haired women and girls, it's not ideal. Sulfates give that lathering effect and they strip your hair of oils and grease. If your hair gets greasy or oily after too long without a shower, then you may want a shampoo with sulfates in it. Now, obviously I'm not your hairdresser. Everyone's hair is different. Generally speaking though, women with thick curly hair don't have that issue. There's of course a wide wide variety of opinions on if you should stop using sulfates altogether if you have curly hair or even, you know, regular hair that's not curly. But at the very least, sulfates are known to cause a bit more dryness and frizziness to the hair. If you wanna go sulfate free, go sulfate free. That's what Diva Curl was all about, giving that option. Silicones on the other hand are polymers designed to retain moisture and give that soft, sleek feeling to hair. Some say they're beneficial and smooth out frizz. Others say oil-based conditioners like coconut oil are a better substitution because silicones can build up and be difficult to remove. And seriously, I can't stress how many varying options there are on this and I'm not trying to sway anyone one way or another. I don't know your hair and I don't really wanna know your hair. That is your personal choice with what you're doing with it. But this this issue and this desire from curly haired women to be more natural in their hair care routine is what inspired Diva Curl and it's their selling point, plain and simple. And it's also why their products and other sulfate silicone free hair brands are often more expensive than the shampoo and conditioner you'll typically see at Target or in the beauty aisle in the supermarket. There are some reasonably priced brands out there like Cantu and Maui Moisture to name a couple, but this natural route is what gave Diva Curl their edge and that very, very sweet selling point and sell they absolutely did. Now, in 2007, which is five years after the No Poo Shampoo launch, Diva Curl started an academy in New York City to teach aspiring hairstylists. Unique haircuts called Diva Cuts were sort of created and stylists were taught this method where each individual curl is cut while dry so people that wear their hair while it's curly can see how it will look naturally. I mean, personally, I feel like this method could go horribly wrong so fast. Like what if you wanna straighten your hair one day? Wouldn't it just be all uneven if some curls are tighter than others. Not to mention this haircut can run anywhere between 75 to $200, which seems a bit much for me, but I mean, you know, hey, maybe it's worth it. I have one of my girlfriends in New York City who does have very long curly hair and goes to well-known salons in Queens. And she told me she pays about $60 with a generous tip for her last cut. Now I've never gotten a diva cut and I haven't seen one done. So maybe this is some super fancy technique, but you know, it does just seem really pricey for a dry cut. Diva curl was purchased in 2017 by Aries Management. Although the amount hasn't been disclosed, Intrepid stated the following. The company sells through professional salon distributors, prestige retail partners, including Sephora and Ulta Beauty. Company owned Diva Chan Salons, Diva Curls Academy, and online. According to industry sources, the transaction values Diva Curl between 250 million and 300 million. Diva Curl expects to generate 65 million in net sales for 2017, representing a value multiple 
multiple of approximately four times to 4.5 times. In other words, they weren't doing half bad by any means. And for a very long time, they were on the rise with no signs of stopping. Recently, however, things started to change. Now, I can't really say exactly how long this has been happening, but word began spreading earlier this year that women were losing their hair because of Diva Curl. I can't say if this was in their 2002 products or if it's only in recent products, and no one seems to know exactly when this all started. One of those to kickstart the whole thing was Aisha Malik. Now, I want to start by saying that Aisha was not paid to use Diva Curl. She was using them even before she was an ambassador, and her interview with Forbes shows that. One day in 2017, I posted a selfie and it went viral. Thousands of women were accusing me of wearing a wig or that I used a curling iron. I hated having my integrity questioned like that, so I made a YouTube video to prove my innocence. I show my hair from wet to dry, styling it with Diva Curl products, said Malik. Their PR team fell in love with me. They added me to their list of influencers, even though I didn't have any followers at the time. A few months later, they flew me out to New York City for an influencer event. I was a fish out of water. I had never felt so out of place in my life. However, a few years later, things changed. On January 31st, 2020, Aisha came out with a video entitled, Why I Stopped Using Diva Curl. And this made waves, or curls, you could say. I'm sorry, I'll see see myself out, I tried. But anyway, Aisha was a former brand ambassador for Diva Curl, as she said at the start of her video. This is my official statement. If you've bought Diva Curl products because of me, I am sorry. If you're currently using these products, Stop immediately. I do not recommend these products on anyone's hair. To her serious credit, she says, silence makes me complicit and that's why I'm coming out with this video. Diva Curl should be the one apologizing and explaining themselves here. Aisha shows more care and concern than the multi-million dollar company hurting their customers. Aisha also says that her lawyer said this wouldn't be libel because you can't get sued for telling the truth. You just know we're in for something good when it's asking, can I get sued for libel for telling the story? I talked to a lawyer and asked if this would be libel and apparently it wouldn't be because you can't get sued for telling the truth. Aisha used Diva Curl for six years and not for the paycheck either. She wanted to settle down and find her soulmate product as she calls it. And with all the conflicting thoughts about what to use for curly hair, it kind of sounded like it was the perfect fit. She then goes on to show photos of how her curly hair started to dry out and look worse. While her hair looks amazing for this video, it looks like it's been straightened or relaxed compared to the photos of what it used to be. Her scalp was on fire. She started getting dandruff, couldn't have a good hair day, and Diva Curl was the only change in her life. There was no food, diet, exercise, hormonal, or hydration changes, nothing. In a way, Aisha was the perfect test subject. Natural, beautiful, curly hair, not straightened in years, not ever colored. No significant changes in years could impact her hair, and she used Diva Curl religiously. Their blow dryers, their microfiber towels, everything. So the answer lies in this box, Aisha said, holding up a gigantic box filled with the Diva Curl products. It had to. It was July, 2018, she started noticing the damage and hair fall out. And the difference she explains between her and other beauty influencers that use this stuff is she was the only one using Diva Curl 100% of the time. And how her hair looks when she uses Diva Curl even once now, like this. It's a mess. She has to use a steroid on her scalp. There's chronic itchiness. She's spending hundreds of dollars for appointments and treatments. Toward the end, Aisha mentioned that there's a theory that there could be plastic, and we've seen this theory in a Facebook support group as well. We can't be sure of this or if Diva Curl will ever actually give answers for this. In that same Forbes article, Diva Curl apparently reached out to her once the video went viral. Diva Curl asked me if I would get on a phone call with them. The damage has been done. There is nothing they can do to fix this. Unless Unless they have some magic potion that will magically heal my scalp, instantly regrow 10 years worth of length, stop my headaches, get the ringing out of my ears, and give me back my original hair color, then I'm not talking to them, she said. But Aisha absolutely wasn't the only one with this problem. Once Aisha spoke out, we saw even more people start to crawl out of the woodwork and share their stories. Mel, a YouTuber that focuses on hair and styling, did a deep dive this last February. She remained pretty impartial, but generally sided with Diva Curl, stating that thousands of people aren't experiencing these problems, so it simply could be Diva Curl just isn't for them. If you're using a product over and over, it can be drying, or that the no poo shampoo isn't meant for removing silicone or heavy oil buildup, so when the buildup accumulates from other products, Diva Curl can't get rid of it. Mel said this can occur with any products, and that aging simply causes hair loss, and it shouldn't be alarming unless the amount is 
excessive. But here's the thing, for many of the women using DivaCurl, it is excessive for them. And there's enough people with problems, 62,000 on the Facebook support group alone. I don't think their hair loss stories can be all chalked up to aging, not to mention if aging was the case and this would then happen with any product, right? So why isn't it happening with people who use Pantene for years or Garnier? Mel mentions that balance is important. So using other products is important, but you can't tell me that's the case for 62,000 women and they just should have used other products when I'm sure there's other people who religiously use their favorite hair brands. Some people like to switch up their routine, some don't. You know what's right for you and what works for your hair. But that video from Aisha where her hair changed from one wash from Diva Curl, it doesn't explain Mel's theories. If it's safe for your hair and you haven't noticed problems, then don't stop using your favorite products. Mel says, and I get where she's coming from saying that, if it works for you, why switch to something else? Because it can take years for that damage to be done, like how a gradual wear away of Aisha's hair happened. And once that damage is done, it's done. Like she mentioned, shaving it off. Not to mention, how can you support a company that's done this to so many women and doesn't care. I'm not saying every single one of those 60,000 plus women have experienced this, but it's definitely more than just a couple. In a post on the Facebook group that asks women to share their stories or post their before and after photos, there's 2,000 comments, 2,000. There's photos of women with serious balding around the hairline claiming it happened in a short amount of time. Others that say there's been serious breakage or a change in texture and photos to show it. One woman's story was even told in the Chicago Tribune. Leslie Gomez noticed her ringlet curls become wavy and her hair thinning last summer, but she didn't panic until her mother told her, you look like you're balding. Before that, she had a head full of shiny, perfect curls, she said, and she was horrified. That sent me into hysterics because I'm thinking that something's wrong internally, Gomez said. The following month, Gomez began getting medical tests done, wondering if her hair loss could be due to hypothyroidism. The possibility of that diagnosis felt far-fetched to the 25-year-old because the condition doesn't run in her family, but she hoped for an answer. The results from her test came back normal, she said, and her worry increase. If you look at my scalp normally with dry hair, you can see through the hair. That's how thin it got, recalled Gomez, and that's not how it was before. Could some of these women be having issues unrelated to Diva Curl? Absolutely. Maybe a couple have alopecia for all I know. There's a slew of possibilities as to why someone is experiencing hair loss, but all of them did have Diva Curl in common. Now, as the YouTuber Mel mentioned, as well as Brad Mondo, the YouTube famous hairstylist, they mentioned three similar points about this entire situation. One is that this reminded them of when a company, when another supposedly good for you natural hair brand had a class action lawsuit for similar problems. Two, the biggest problem product was the Diva Curl No Poo Shampoo. And three, they both discussed product buildup. So here's the thing, product buildup is normal to an extent. It's going to happen. I don't disagree with that. It's a fact of life. But Diva Curl has to cause an insane amount of product buildup for hair to just fall off. And according to research, that's exactly the case here. Oxidative stress, the inability of the body to sufficiently counteract the sources of oxidation is prevalent in many skin conditions, including normal skin aging. On the scalp, the hair appears to be impacted prior to emergence and oxidative stress appears to play a role in premature hair loss. The scalp commensal organism has been recognized to be a source of oxidative damage. Therefore, hair care products, specifically shampoos with active malassezia inhibitory agents, such as zinc something, I cannot say this word, but here it is, tend to reduce premature hair loss besides the known benefits in treating specific dermatologic scalp pathologies and therefore should represent an integral part of every treatment regimen for hair loss, even in individuals not showing symptoms of scalp pathologies. So yes, we do have little organisms all over our scalp and that's normal. We've got tiny little microorganisms crawling all over us just in case you didn't know. So sorry if that freaks you out, but uh, that's the tea. So I'm here to tell you about shampoos and that it makes your hair fall out and not let you sleep at night, but you know, that's not entirely it. So I'm just gonna simplify things a bit here. So when the study says sources of oxidative stress with impact on the pre-emergent fiber, it's basically just saying that too much oil on your scalp is going to feed that malassezia or whatever it is. So when there's too much oil on your scalp, you go into the sun, those oils turn rancid and can harm the growth of new hair. So using a lipid rich cleansing conditioner, clock the grapeseed oil in Diva Curl's original no poo formula, along Alongside lipid rich hair mass and conditioning treatments are not only a recipe for scalp buildup, but for one rancid scalp buildup. So 
that's just kind of gross. I mean, just imagine how much buildup of product there has to be sitting on your scalp in order to do the damage these women are claiming it did. Now, there's also the possibility of the packaging like we mentioned. An article from The Gloss states, Stephanie Marrow, the Facebook group creator, thinks it might have to do with the product's plastic packaging, formaldehyde potentially being released at the packaging stage or their preservative system, which as she shared in an August 2019 post, the brand can change without alerting customers. And remember the issues with Monet? When an FDA agent went to Monet's factory, they reported the unsanitary conditions were contaminating the products, which isn't to say that that isn't happening here. It just means there's only so much the consumer can gather from what a brand chooses to make public. So could this be allergies, menthol, packaging, the lipid rich conditioner or shampoo? Yes, or it could be none of these things. Seriously, I won't pretend to know. I don't always know the answers to everything, but I tried to research to find what I think could be the answer. And unfortunately, it seems like we'll have to wait a while before we know anything. After all, considering Wen's FDA investigation has been open since 2014 and no definitive link between their products or hair loss has been made, it could be years before anyone really has an answer to what's happening with Diva Curl. So regardless of what might be causing this, the class action lawsuit has moved forward. Forward. Diva Concepts has been hit with a proposed class action in New York that alleges the company Diva Curl's products are harmful to consumers and detrimental to the quality and appearance of their hair. The products can cause hair loss, hair thinning, scalp irritation, and skin burning, the 21-page case says. Defendants do not warn consumers that the use of the products may result in these adverse outcomes. According to the case, Diva Concepts is aware of the problems caused by its Diva Curl products, yet has blamed such on other risk factors, including birth, stress, scalp buildup, losing weight, and illness. The entire lawsuit is quite a long read, but as we mentioned, it's the no poo shampoo that's the big issue here. Stephanie Marrow, the leader of the Facebook group, has photos on her Instagram as well in the lawsuit, and the damage is heartbreaking. I mean, some people rely on their hair. If this woman is a stylist and she's taking care of clients looking like this, it's got to affect her business to some degree. I'm sure most people expect their hairstylist to know what they're doing, and she recommended Diva Curl to clients before knowing the harm it could cause. Plus, for so many women and men out there, hair is a part of who you are. You dye it to reflect your personality, cut it to feel stylish and good about yourself. It's just it's kind of an identifying feature. It's literally part of you and what you put out into the world. I mean, yeah, it's hair, it grows back, it changes, but it matters to people and it's a way to express yourself. More and more devastated and furious customers have filed lawsuits, the most recent one being around May 6th from what I see. It's for the same thing and this one is filed by Kathleen Biles. Now onto the really infuriating part, Diva Curl's response. If you're expecting an apology or an explanation, don't hold your breath. Here is what they said. To our devoted diva community. Over two decades ago, Diva Curl was born from conversations with people like you and from our salons and stylists about what you wanted and needed to embrace your curls. As a result, our community has grown to include millions of divas around the world who use our products every day. When that conversation includes product and safety discussions, we are as engaged as you are. We are committed to providing the information you need to continue to use Diva Curl with confidence. We don't speculate on why some people are attributing the challenges with their curls to our products. As part of our ongoing commitment to product safety and satisfaction of our Diva community, we are conducting additional testing with an independent party. Please share your experiences with us at customercare at divacurl.com. We will go above and beyond to help anyone on their curl journey, your Diva Curl family. So there's two paragraphs about how they say their products are tested and I won't bore you with the reading. It's safe to say that there's just no apology here. And as for that testing, if you head over to their website, it says the exact same thing. Our products are safe to use. We go through a range of tests. Our products pass the necessary testing requirements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, I'm not saying they don't. I mean, maybe all of Diva Curl's products do pass the needed test. They do seem to have some recipes for that. I can understand why they wouldn't want to say, we're sorry our products cause damage because they don't want to admit fault when we're not even sure what happened exactly. But the thing that I think ticks most people off is that they sound like they don't care. There's no concern or compassion in that apology. They aren't even speaking like human beings. Like, we're so sorry for those of you who have experienced hair loss, we can only imagine how heartbreaking that could be. Our products have passed safety requirements but we will be putting on hold our no poo shampoo production until we can release additional testing from multiple third parties to ensure your safety. Why was that such a hard thing to possibly write? Because I don't know. Of course though, they don't wanna stop selling their products. But what if those independent tests come back with some serious issues, then what? Then they'll have to put a recall out and have even more people that lost hair. And I guess for them, that's a fair trade. So frankly, 
I wouldn't risk my hair for Diva Curl. I don't think anyone should. Even if it turns out that Diva Curl wasn't to blame or it was just one bad batch or, you know, I don't know, it's a matter of not switching products enough. There are plenty of other shampoo and conditioner like companies out there that don't have class action lawsuits against them that also compete with Diva Curl for that market share. And I'd rather kind of use one of those, a company that cares about their customers while I'm at it. Now, Diva Curl does have more recipes and testing. Their products haven't killed anyone. So yes, they're a lot better than companies we have reviewed on this channel, but you know, it's a pretty low bar at this point. So ultimately here, I'm not a cosmetologist. I'm not a hairdresser. Talk to those people. They're kind of the pros in this industry. And that's the reason Aisha stopped using Diva Curl in the first place. The things you put on your body and your hair are worth researching about. So With that being said, that's where I'm gonna end today's video. Let me know your thoughts, your comments, your whatevers, all down below in the comment section. And if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you want more content from me, pop open my description box, links for all my social media, puppy channel for Casper, collaboration channel with Sad Milk, links for everything, description box down below. Again, guys, thank you so much for making it to another video. I love you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.